What if I told you that by putting vodka or vinegar into your saltwater aquarium, you could help your tank out? It's absolutely true, and it's something we call carbon dosing. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what it is, what the potential downsides are, and how you can make your own solution at home that's going to save you a ton of money actually using vodka or vinegar or even sugar or bio pellets in your aquarium is a way to carbon dose your aquarium to get the beneficial bacteria to explode in population and consume the nitrates and phosphates that might be elevated in your tank despite your other methods of trying to bring them down maybe those things weren't working and you wanted to try something else you could give this a shot and hey, before we get started, if you have ever carbon dosed your aquarium or if you looked into it and decided not to, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what product you used and how you went about doing it. I'd like to learn from you just as much as you're learning from me. The beneficial bacteria in your aquarium consume nitrates and phosphates, but they also need a carbon source to be able to tie all that together and complete all of their biological processes. And then basically what happens after that is they have used up all of those things. They've bound them up within themselves and then your filtration. And really, I would recommend that you're running a good tuned in skimmer for this, removes those bacteria from the water column, thereby reducing those compounds from the water, lowering your nitrates and phosphates. But there are some downsides to doing this. Carbon dosing your aquarium can temporarily lower your pH, so you want to make sure that you're keeping tabs on your parameters throughout the time that you're going to be doing this to make sure that everything stays where it should. Along with that, what you're trying to do by doing this method is increase the bacterial population in your aquarium. And if you go too hard and too fast with this, you can actually create a bacterial bloom in your tank, which is obviously less than ideal and the additional bacterial population in the water is going to be consuming some of the oxygen that's available in the water. So you're going to have to make sure that you keep your surface agitation and your oxygenation of the water in the tank where it should be. Right along with that same thing, if you create a bacterial bloom in the tank by accident, your water clarity and the turbidity of the water is going to take a big hit and the tank's not going to look as good as it should. The nitrate reduction that happens in the aquarium could also cause your alkalinity to slowly drop a little bit as well. So keep an eye on that. And you could also end up creating a nutrient imbalance between your nitrates and phosphates if you drag one or the other down too far. And that could lead to other problems like cyanobacteria or dinoflagellates or even diatoms. So the old adage in reef keeping absolutely applies here. Nothing good happens fast. You want to start this low and you want to go slow with it and creep up on the measurement or the dose that you're going to need for your aquarium to make sure that it's effective, but not overly effective. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to tell you how to make this for yourself. And it's actually really, really easy. But a very simple guideline that you can go by with your tank is if your nitrates are above 10, you can generally dose about three milliliters of this per 25 gallons of tank volume without too much to worry about. If your nitrates are between two and a half and 10, drop that to two milliliters. And if your nitrates are already below two and a half, you would only be doing one milliliter. But I would caution you not to even do this unless your nitrates are way over 10, like a week and a half ago, mine were at 25, regardless of the other things I was doing to try to bring them down. So carbon dosing was a thing that I was considering and ultimately did. And what I can tell you is over the past week, my nitrates have dropped from 25 down to 10, and the algae that I've been fighting in my aquarium is finally starting to break loose, and I can brush it off of the rocks. So I think that this is actually working, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. There are a ton of products out there on the market for saltwater enthusiasts that basically do this exact same thing. Bio pellets, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, are a slow release thing as they wear down in the tank they release their organic carbon source it does the same thing over an extended period of time with a slow release sort of mechanism other ones are liquid types of supplements that you can get that basically do the same thing they are some mixture of acetic acid which is vinegar and some sort of an alcohol or some other couple other things here and there but it's basically all just organic carbon sources in a bottle and some of them can be really expensive one of the most common ones on the market and it is really effective and this is not a slam against this product 
is Nopox or N-O-P-O-X by the Red Sea Company. It's an excellent product. And if you don't want to do all the DIY stuff and buying these things and figuring it out, it's a really good option for you to choose if you want to go that route. However, with what I have here and mixing my own, I can reduce my cost by about six times less than what I would pay for the equivalent amount of Nopox. And I'm broke, so that makes sense. Allow me to introduce you to Popox, the poor man's version of Nopox, which is basically a 70% to 30% mixture of distilled white vinegar. This is a no-name brand, generic distilled white vinegar. It's 5% acetic acid. You can get this at just about any grocery store out there and an 80 proof version of an adult beverage with that name right there. You take about 30% of this, you put it to 70% of this, mix it up, and you basically have an organic carbon source to add to your aquarium. Now, if you wanted to be even less expensive, you could run either one of these just on their own. And there's some charts that you can find on the Reef to Reef forum, which I will link in the description. You can check that out after you finish the video. That'll give you the information that you need on how much of individual ones of these you need to dose. But this is not rocket science. You don't have to get the mixture exactly right. You could use just vinegar if you wanted to, or you could use just the alcohol if you wanted to. Mixing the two together, theoretically at least, would provide a diversification of carbon sources where you get a diversification of bacteria. But it's not been studied and nobody has any proof that mixing them together actually grows more or less bacteria than either one of the other on their own. It's all pretty much hypothetical, but it makes sense in my mind. So that's why I chose to mix them and go this route. Now, as far as adding this to the aquarium, my preference is dosing a little bit over an extended period of time. And you don't need any expensive dosers to do this. I created this very simple drip dosing system from an old algae barn uh, copepod bottle, a little air valve, and a piece of air line. And this is really all that's needed. You just slow that drip down where you're getting one drop every you know, few seconds or whatever. Put your mixture of your uh, carbon solution in there at whatever measurement you're going to be dosing for that day. For my tank, I'm doing 60 milliliters a day right now, and it seems to be going pretty well. And then mix a little bit of salt water in there with that and let that drip into the tank in a high flow area throughout however long it takes for that bottle to empty. It really is as simple as that. Now, if you're micro dosing this stuff and you're getting it all the way down and you're trying to hold that line of one part per million of nitrate, then you're probably going to have to get a little bit more accurate with it. But for most people and for myself, I'm trying to come down from 25 and bring it down to about five parts per million. That accuracy is just not needed and the drip bottle works just fine. And the only thing left for you to do now is subscribe to the channel and watch that video on the screen right now. I think you'll find it pretty interesting.